connected to the people at Comet Pizza. So uh, Cappy was the one that kind of found Vegan Mikey. This is the story anyway. And then connected him with Lift the Veil so that they could be interviewed or that he could be interviewed there. And I would say that ever since that happened, a large percentage of the Lift the Veil audience turned against the host there. And uh, basically, because they took Cappy to be a shill, they then took the host there to be a shill as well. And uh, and then, then thought that the whole Voodoo Donuts thing was probably a LARP or a setup because all these people were involved. And because that's how it was presented, you know? Um, so again, it's just like with Pizzagate where you wonder, uh, you, you can't really tell like, you know, what parts are fake and what aren't, or what is the point of doing this? Yeah. But you could tell that there's somebody who's doing some, this is some kind of production, you know? So why are we, why are we being put through this? We don't know. Right. But, what, the, some, some really weird shit has been rolling down off of Mount Olympus for what I would say is about three years now. <laughs> right? Like, we don't, yeah. like, what are you guys doing? Check a look at this picture here I got up, Tracy. I don't know who this guy is, but as I'm clicking through the uh, Cappy, um, I, I typed in uh, Vegan Mikey and um, just was rolling the image searches. And now I've never seen this picture. And it says his friend and promoter Eli James was in the same band as Podesta lookalike Chester Bennington. So maybe this is Eli James. I don't know for sure. That's just a far out picture. Scar over the left eye, like looking like your whole head might have been opened and your eye swapped out. And over the right eye, of course, uh, this beautiful spirally triangle, which we know now to um, supposedly mean something to do with, uh, I don't remember if this one's boy love. There, each, each of these symbols have a different kind of pedophilic uh, child trafficking um, vibe to them. And, you know, this all came out with the Podesta stuff. Have you seen this picture before? I've not seen that one exactly, but yeah, um, it is the symbol of boy love. So, uh, Mikey, I have a I have a picture that I have been holding on to for about a year of when Vegan Mikey was doing his interview, or like I think his second interview with Lift the Veil, where he, he on camera he's saying something about how he wants to reveal something so that everybody can see it. Those are the words that he's putting out, and as he's doing this. He does this thing over his eyes, just like that. It's it's so, you know, normally I don't point things like this out, but it was just so obvious, you know? Uh, he's doing this uh, hand signal having to do with, you know, the eye of Horus, basically. And, right. Uh, and, uh, he, like, the host nodded when he did it. It was just so uh, definitely a, a communication uh, you know, between people who are both involved in a scripted thing and both involved in a uh, organization that is some kind of cult, you know. Um, so the, the interesting thing about Ve Vegan Mikey, and I, br I bring this up because I really do think it was, you know, pretty damning for Cappy, who at the end of his life is saying that he's done something terrible. He even, I think, said that he was a fraud or something like that. I'm a phony. I can't remember the exact words, but it was would go right along with him actually being a character in a LARP. Um, so the, so I think that, you know, in addition to saying stuff about Seth Green, if he was a character in a, in a fictional narrative, um, putting out the vegan Mike and Mikey story about Voodoo Donuts was very much part of what he was supposed to do. So you have to look at that story to understand Cappy and why he might have been brought out. Um, so, I forget what I was gonna say about it even, just, it, it uh, went out of my mind, but <laughs> anyway, it just, it definitely okay. seemed, um, you know, go ahead. Oh yeah, I was gonna say that, that they did end up getting traced to this thing called Troma Films. Right. Which was, they had a headquarters in the same, um, block of buildings that uh, that Comet Pizza is on, and they're all connected by these Shanghai tunnels to Dante's, which is this openly satanic uh, nightclub over here. Which you know I've been at to actually many times, and I was even on on uh, one of their shows one time. It was like it was nothing related to 
it was just like a talk show. But anyway, um, that's over there. At the, no, wait. Yeah. The Dante's is there in the in the PDX area. Yeah, it's in Portland. Okay. I've... So Dante's is there. It's like it's just you know in the same uh, square of adjacent buildings, you know, or, or buildings that are across the street and all connected by tunnels underneath. And Dante's in particular, there is a basement, which I have even been down in this basement just because a friend of mine was uh, getting dressed for her show there. And I just went down there with her. But uh, so I didn't see the access to the actual Shanghai tunnels, but it was probably you know, beyond one of the doors that I was in front of, you know. <clears throat> Trippy. So, yeah, and I've always just gotten a real weird vibe from those Shanghai tunnels. There's a there's a really cool bar that's right in the same area that I've been to a few times. And that's one of the reasons why me and my friends would always like to go there is it just feels so weird to be, because it's a downstairs bar. And so, you know, you're like right next to this place where people were back in the day, you know, kidnapped and shipped off to Asia, um, which the narrative, the story being told by vegan Mikey is that that's still happening. You know, that there's a, a human trafficking ring that's still using these underground tunnels, just like they are in uh, uh, Washington, D.C., around Comet Pizza to, you know, traffic children to people. And I don't know if you noticed this week, there uh, like Infowars put out a new video about, you know, whether or not uh, the Clintons and the Clinton Foundation are involved in child trafficking. So it seems like, you know, this week they want to bring the subject up again. They, you know... The media, I guess. Well, I'm starting to think more and more that it's probably, uh, and this is kind of off topic, but not really. I think the the script that, that we used to watch back in the day was probably actually produced by human beings for the most part. Maybe the outline was uh, fed into a computer and got back, but now it seems to me like they, the artificial intelligence or machine learning, however you want to look at it, it seems like they're taking their lead from the computer programs and trying because because in case you haven't noticed folks all of the media across the board has gone to shit and it's because i think that people used to know what they were doing more because they were more directly involved in writing the scripts and it seems to me like now the script is coming at them hard and fast and so they keep just it's like it's like someone who can't keep up with the dishes in the kitchen when the when the restaurant's busy or something that's the way the mainstream media and the alternative YouTube type media, they all seem like they, they don't know what's happening next. And it didn't used to be that way, you know? Yeah, it's definitely hard to tell, you know, where they're trying to push you next. And it could very well be, you're right, that like, that, you know, just as there's obviously robots what, uh, writing these terrible pop songs that come out now, uh, it's they're probably writing the movies and the uh, the articles on on online magazines and they're writing the scripts for news TV shows and uh, they're even writing the scripts for uh, psyops that that uh, the CIA does so <laughs> yeah I wonder sometimes I, right. I wonder if that's why the school shootings look so bad sometimes uh, because it's just like crap, we got to pull another one of these out of our hat already? Like, you know. I think it's on purpose they look bad so that they can suss out the people that are really paying attention. I've always thought that, too. Good good point, Jim. Oh, by the way, if you haven't noticed Jim's hat, folks, uh, read Jim's hat for an update inside the update. And um, I'm going to look into see um, if we can get some of those produced or not. Here, let, me, let me see if... Uh, oh, there's no way to make you big. Huh? I don't have a just gem cam. We need a just gem cam. Duh. You can make one real quick. That's funny. But yeah, oh, and I also have uh, my my Plus Ultra hat. We're both bringing our, our strong hat game this week. These you can get I like the hats. on the Plus Ultra Club Zazzle store. The link should be in the description. Um, if it's not, it will be after the show. But uh, Tracy populated a Zazzle store with a whole bunch of cool stuff. I bought this. I bought a bag that I'm going to deliver to Tracy. Um, I should be back over your way this weekend. I don't know what your availability is. but um, And the John D's World Magnet. 
I bought one of those, and that's the one item, Tracy, that came out the best out of the, the merch I've bought so far. The John D. Magnet is it's stunning. It's brilliant. Okay. So. Nice. Good. Thank you. Cool. So, yeah, um, regarding Cappy, I... Uh...